Hello everyone, I'm Yamino of Sister Claire, the artist of Sister Claire, and I'm joined tonight by the one, the only, the incredible, the indelible Ash Barnes. I write the missing moments and I help Eleanor write the comic. We're also joined tonight by the your daring, delible, darling David. There we go. <laughs> there we go. I like that one. I like that one. <sighs> Oh, Seffi said, I was on the Discord voice chat and forgot you can't hear me say hi back. Oh, <laughs> Hi, Seffi. We hi. love you. I'm going to show off a new trick that I just learned with Manga Studio that I love and I wish I had learned a very long time ago. So I usually color in Photoshop and I'm still going to take this back into Photoshop to color. But I recently discovered a very cool trick with the fill tool where you can set the close gap margin. So normally if you fill, oh wait, let me get an actual color. Her, she's not actually going to be green. But um, wait, let me find a better example. You see how here there's a gap. And normally if you click and fill there, it's going to bleed into that area. But what you can do with this is set the close gap margin so that when you click it, it'll recognize that this is a tight gap and it won't fill it all the way. And here's the really magical part that I learned. You can click on an area of color and hold it, and you can just, which is super useful, especially when you're doing <clears throat> buttons and, I don't know, pearl necklaces or rosaries in our case. But, like, yeah, this is so cool. And Lark is abruptly fluorescent. <clears throat> yep. Except for that one button. There you go. I just wanted to show how this works. <laughs> Seffi said Lark is defying gravity. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but, yeah, I just thought that was really cool, and I thought I would share for anyone who uh, might have this program. <sighs> I really wish that I had... Oh yeah, see, this is where it's really useful. Watch this, guys. I click on one bead, and then I just drag it along. That's really nice. Magical. <laughs> but yeah, I still think I'm going to draw this in Photoshop. I'm going to color it in yeah. Photoshop. I just wanted to share that tidbit. <laughs> Green screen lark. <laughs> Y'all have had some good questions tonight. Are there any others? Not that we're like stopping or anything. I just thought I would prompt people. If you want to ask, please do. Hmm. Matt, why? <laughs> Matt said... What if Hannah made light replicas of them all when she got lonely? <sighs> How about, think of it this way, this thing that Ellen is drawing is probably a family photo that Hannah looks at when she's sad. How is that any less sad? I wasn't trying for it to be less sad, I was competing with Matt for the sad. <laughs> Matt, I'm the sad headcanon friend, okay. <laughs> Riggy said, stop, we're trying to have a happy night. What does that make me, the torture headcanon friend? Probably. You've got, like, a string of hair on your forehead. Let me fix that. I have so many hairs on my head. Well, so many. <clears throat> um, let's see. I need to find a file that has their hair colors and stuff on it. Seppi said, here's one. How close is Throne of Mare's failed colony? Is it just immediately across the sand? No, it is not. It is about a week's worth of sailing away. However, that's only because of the crosswinds. Um, if you look at the map that we posted in one of the last missing moments where it was talking about Clementine, um, 
she she makes mention of the dangerous crosswinds on the map. Uh, like, so, <clears throat> like, you have that to worry about leaving Throne There's so many obstacles in any direction. Um, going on the mainland, you risk yourself with shards. Going in the water, you know, okay, once you get out of the, the little bay, or it's probably a, there's a, there's a name for what that kind of body of water is called. Is it a bite? I think it's called a bite. B-I-G-H-T. I think. I'd have to look it up. Anyway, once you get out of that, that area of protected water near Throne of Mare, you have pirates to worry about, you have the dangerous crosswinds, uh, but it takes about a week of sailing to get to the failed colony. <coughs> Kilandra asks, are you guys doing okay with Hurricane Irma coming in? My thoughts are with the people who have faced the storm and will face it. We are currently not in its line of fire, um, at least according to the, the latest models. Um, we don't live in Florida, we live in North Carolina. There are some people in the chat who do live in Florida who are going to weather the storm. Good luck, please try to be safe. If you need us, please message us. Um, <clears throat> right now, we're more concerned with uh, the other hurricane out in the Atlantic, Jose. They have um, they have a line of like wind shear, cold front kind of things that are supposedly going to push it more west northwest and get it away from us back out into open water. But if that line of storms dissipates, then on its current track, Jose could smash right into us. Oh, I can't believe that nobody has mentioned this yet, but Pidge isn't wearing his eye thing. Oh, you're right, he's not. I should probably draw him with it. <laughs> <clears throat> I hate to hide his beautiful eyes. Westy from the East said, I have a question. How much time passed between Hanabi first meeting the flock and then laying with the Polly party? The turnaround seemed rather quick for such a shy girl. She lived with them for, I think, hmm, pretty close to a, let's see. I'd have to really go back and think about it, but it was, it was a while, it was several months, like, and that might seem pretty quick for turnaround time, but also if you think about it, like that that was really Hannah's first experience with people being really invested in her and taking care of her. And it kind of makes sense to me that she would have, you know, fallen for them pretty quickly. <coughs> and trusted them pretty quickly. I mean, she lived with them from day one. She went from being kind of a boarder in their house to their friend to more. Her my. Riggy says, I have a question. What's the canon purpose slash explanation of Gabrielle's bubble boys? Are they specifically a Selkie or Siren thing or something else that hasn't been explained yet? I have a headcanon for that that I have not yet discussed with Elena or Lara. And before I answer it, I want 
to talk about it with them. But I want to say that I think there is an explanation. I could venture it right now, if you want. Um, would you rather me talk about it with you in private first, Elena? Well, you can talk about it and we can say it's not canon yet. Okay. My thought is that... So, okay. <clears throat> as, you, as you all know, if you've read The Missing Moments, Gabby has been with Clementine the entire time Clementine, like, has been at school, you know, like, at the Helsing Abbey, and after that, going around, talking to witches and stuff. Gabby's been there the whole time. Gabby knows how to read now. Gabby's been in class with her. Gabby has magic, and I think the Bubble Boys are something that she plays around with. Um, she doesn't have magic like Clementine. It's a completely different sort. Uh, but I think she's a very rare example of a Selkie that went to school and like learned to use some of that innate magic. At least this is my thought to make little things like the Bubble Boys. Mm -hmm. I think that's perfectly plausible. I think her initial reason for making them was so when Clementine was not super far away, but not close enough to talk to in person, and they didn't want to break out their special shells, and Gabby also wanted to imply that, hey, you know, you shouldn't underestimate me either. Also, the idea to, like, to throw people off the idea that she's a Selkie, like, to some it's pretty obvious, to others not so much, and as she got older and a little bit wiser, like, she would try to be a little more careful about broadcasting to everyone, hi, I am a rare sea creature with an extraordinarily valuable pelt, like, and her doing magic might make people think twice, like, oh, not really a selkie. So, well, doing magic like that sort of magic. <clears throat> Those were all my thoughts. These thoughts can change at any time. I think they're good thoughts. Matt wants Pidge to be wearing a Hawaiian shirt. Hmm. <laughs> he looks like someone who would wear one. He does, doesn't he? Yes. I don't really want to do that whole pattern. <laughs> 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 See, this is where that, like, gap fill <clears throat> thing would have been great. <clears throat> oh, Riggy, that's really interesting, too. Riggy said... Hmm, okay, cool. The theories we were coming up with were way edgier. <laughs> we were discussing that maybe Selkies and Sirens had a type of water control that allowed them to give temporary sentience, and maybe Sirens used them as ways of luring people in as well. That's really cool, but I don't know if, if we'll go with an explanation like that. I think that probably, well... I was about to say I think the Bubble Boys preceded Siren Gabby, but actually I don't think so because they're modeled after her post-Siren transformation. They don't have to be. Um, I mean, they look blue with little curls of blue hair, but... Pink, no, it's like literally her color palette. Like that's, it's the I mean, same. that's fine. Her pelt's blue and she has that blonde wig. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> I do think it would be interesting if her, <clears throat> if her capability with magic, like, 
was enhanced in her middle form, like not quite siren, not quite silky anymore. It would be interesting if, you know, if one plus to that form was being able to use magic a little more. I mean, we see her do it. You know, she's able to much more easily manipulate water. Mm -hmm. I think that it would be good if the Bubble Boys were post-Siren transformation. Also because um, I think she would always be looking for ways to use her Siren abilities in a non-threatening way. Mm -hmm. And what's less threatening than these really dopey looking, mm -hmm. like, bubble children, you know, things to make Clementine laugh, which yeah. would be very hard things to find at yeah. that time. Mm -hmm. I do, I like the idea of them preceding that form, but being something that carries over. Um, we can talk about it more, though. <clears throat> <laughs> this is us <laughs> discussing story ideas. Oh... Steffi said, hmm, Alana, do you know why the colors you pick from egg sheet are so much more saturated when you fill, fill with them on the wallpaper? Um, are they? Hmm, maybe the color setting is different. Set to monitor RGB. Well, it should be the same. Yeah, you're right. It does, now that you mention it, kind of looks more saturated here. Yeah. <clears> hmm. <throat> hmm. Hmm. Ah, there we go. Hmm. I did actually view the proof colors. There we go. Now that's more like it. Good eye, Seffy. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> On my screen, Mark looks almost orange. Oh, you fixed it. Yeah, that's why. <laughs> hmm. <sighs> <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> it looks so weird without the liner. <laughs> it does. <laughs> oh my god, what color is that? <laughs> Oh, okay, that was so familiar. It's like, oh, what the hell? Why did her face turn like diarrhea green? Oh. <laughs> Rosy green. <laughs> Steffi says, wait, how did you fix the color saturation thing? <clears throat> so I went to view. I checked to make sure that proof setup was set to monitor RGB. And then I checked proof colors so that I would see the proof colors, um, and that fixed it. Let me know if you need a slower explanation. I can do that again. Egg doesn't really look much like his dad. He's like a fraction of a shade paler than his mom. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> it reminds me of two professors in, in this department. Like, the husband is 
the whitest white bread to ever white, and his wife is uh, Indian, and their children look exactly like their mom and nothing like their dad. <laughs> but their dad, their dad has this like pop star hair. It's he frosts the tips of his hair, and he's like in his fifties by now, I guess, or late forties, and he looks like. A, a, back, a backstreet boy reject. A very nice, he's very nice, but like his hair has been a source of amusement for me ever since he started working here. <laughs> I'm like, <clears throat> wow. I sure hope he doesn't listen to this. <laughs> For some reason, when the computer lags, it really doesn't like to switch between tools. Hmm. And it makes it such a pain. <clears throat> Hannah is so goth. <laughs> She's like low key goth. I remember when I first designed what? her, like the very first time I drew her, I wanted her to wear really dark clothes so that neon bright colors would show up brightly against her. Well, why don't you give her something brighter here? But that's just not her style. Like, she likes dark colors. I mean, you've only ever drawn her in dark colors, but she doesn't have to wear Therefore, them. she loves <laughs> dark <laughs> colors. Elena. <laughs> Why not <clears throat> give her something bright green? That would be really pretty. She just doesn't look like somebody who wears bright green. <laughs> she looks like somebody who thinks that bright colors are... Rather loud. Res attack says something about Ed's left arm. I'm not sure what they're talking about. Mm. I'm not sure either. It looks fine to me. Hmm. Yeah, I'm not sure what's wrong with it. I don't see it. Is it too long? Like, Well, at this point, I don't care because <laughs> I'm not doing any more line art now. I love kind of these amethyst clips. Mm -hmm. I'm allowed to say that about my own character. <laughs> I think kind of his favorite color is purple. Maybe I can make her with purple. It's gonna look like her hair. <clears throat> I mean, she wore purple in the last chapter. See? I know. 
I just don't, I don't think you should draw her in the same colors all the time. Why not? It's called visual, what's the word I'm looking for? Laziness? Like no, it, <laughs> it's so that people recognize the color scheme. God. Oh. People should be glad I even draw them in different outfits at all. <laughs> Most cartoonists don't even do that. At least I don't give her like a Powerpuff Girl dress. <laughs> Have her wear that all the time. <clears throat> She's like Morticia Adams, like dark colors just make her happy. Some people like dark colors. I know it's really hard for you to imagine, Ash. <laughs> I find it really hard to imagine that she would want to wear really dark robes all the time, considering she spent the majority of her like early life being like viciously abused by someone who wore such things. Yeah, but hers are fashionable. Um... <sighs> Oh shoot, what happened? His little mask moved. Let's get you back where you belong. I don't know if I actually want that color in the background. Any questions or anything in the chat? Hmm. <laughs> People are just talking about what kind of family photo backdrop they could use. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Sefi said, like when you go to picture day and get to choose between lasers, a woodland scene, and those cloudy paint smudge things. <laughs> I mean, I can put a cloudy paint smudge.
Hmm. RTMK said, I will have to say that your drawing of Hanabi's triggering of her hair being pulled by Abraham was spot on. I got empathetic flashbacks. Well done. Hmm. Thank you. Yeah, that was hard to draw. I remember telling Ash as I was drawing it, like, it's such a violation. It felt really difficult to draw because I really get into the characters' heads when I'm drawing them. Mm -hmm. And it was uncomfortable. But not so uncomfortable I couldn't draw it. As much as I feel like I really have to put myself in the characters' heads to draw emotions and stuff realistically, there's also a part of me that's like, oh, this should be so good when we reveal it. Everything ties in so nicely. But thank you. If it has that emotional impact, I know I've done my job. Like, RCMK asked an interesting question. Would Abraham have done that had she known? Would she have done that anyway? If you mean pulled Hannah's hair, probably not in that particular way. Would she still have cut Hannah's hair? Yeah, but probably wouldn't have, you know, pulled her head up like that. Abraham is, like, She's not a good person, guys, okay? She's really not. Um, you know, she makes... <sighs> questionable isn't even the right word. She makes really bad decisions. And she does what she thinks is necessary, which often involves the killing and, you know, horrible burning of innocent children. And, you know, she's not, she's not really meant to be at least when she reaches that point, an ultra-sympathetic character. Um, that being said, she doesn't actively enjoy tormenting people. And she's very... She doesn't really like Hana at this point, because, you, well... Hana killed her favorite griffin. <laughs> Not well, only... she didn't kill it. She de-winged it, but still, it's probably going to have to be put down. What use do they have for a one-armed, mm -hmm. one-winged griffin? Yeah, like... But Hana has been... Also, she probably killed several of those Helsings. I mean, she blew them up with fireworks. Yeah, like, not only did Abraham just lose some of her Helsings, but Hana has been causing her grief for quite a while, and, like, for literal years, and you see some of that, like, anger and frustration being thus taken out on Hana. I'm not trying to excuse it, I'm just trying to tell you where it's coming from. That, like, Abraham doesn't usually act quite as smug as she did with Hana. Um, but all that being said, had she known that pulling Hana's hair in that way was going to, you know... Be really triggering. Be really triggering. She wants to capture Hana and, you know, use her for other purposes. But active torture is really not her jam. So, would she have avoided it? 
pulled her up by the collar as other people in the chat are suggesting, like, done it a little more humanely? Yeah, probably. But it should be signature to y'all that she didn't take any time to find out. Well, it's not like in that situation you can ask your prisoner, like, hey, is it cool if I pull your hair right now? It's not like BDSM. No, 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 exactly. <laughs> but, like, she doesn't, at that point, I like... I would have just been like, go to hell. <laughs> yeah, like, Sefi put it, put it the way what I was trying to. Right now, Abraham can justify a lot of things, but even she can't justify some levels of cruelty. Like, if she knew what she was about to do was something that would echo all the way back to Hannah's abusive childhood, she would have avoided it. But, like, you know, she's not going to be like, hi, I'm going to capture you now or anything. Right now, her her thoughts are simply, I have to capture you, and then I have to find some way to make, you know, all the other troublesome people who accompany you come try to get you. So... Budgie said, you know what would be heartbreaking? Make an alternate of this pic, making it look like a partially burnt photograph. I already had that thought. I was just, you know, going to be nice and not rip out everyone's hearts. Matt also said he'd been thinking about it. <laughs> yeah, I shouldn't laugh. I actually find it horrible. This is why we can't have nice things. What the hell is that noise? It's always my foot on the floor, sorry. Stop. I'm sorry. Yeah. Does Pidge have freckles? Mm. I want to say I've mentioned that he does. Y'all, does Pidge have freckles? Help me out. <laughs> I haven't. I think I drew him with freckles before. Mm. I think I mentioned that he's like sunburned. Yeah, stuff. yeah, like, he's sunburned for sure. I, yeah. <laughs> Space Budgie said. Also in alt making Pidge look even more like a dad. Give him dad arm hair and a wristwatch. <laughs> <laughs> That'd be cute. Tuck his polo into his shorts. <laughs> Proxy said, You think the girls like to just use Pidge as a pillow since he's big and soft? Probably, yeah. They don't even have a couch. Yeah. They just sit on him.
Oh my god. Matt said, I'm back, and the only mention of freckles in Luce Dopo is in reference to Clementine. Hmm. <laughs> and someone else said, how do you find this info so fast? Thanks to Lara, we have a functional archive now. <laughs> it's true. Matt said, functional archive? How so? What's that like? It's just our, our archive was broken before, and now Laura has fixed it. Um, we still need, like, let me, let me look at the, the Claire site really quick. We still need to put in a link for, oh, maybe we don't. Ah, yes, we do. We still need to put in a link for Chapter 9 from Book 2. There's not one there yet. Uh, but aside from that, the archive is pretty complete. <laughs> Seffi said, a question, was Egg meant to be like a nickname or temporary name until he figured out his birdiness? To be honest, I've always imagined that they gave him that name because they thought it was hilarious. Remember, they're really young parents, okay? They're like in their early 20s. And I, I like the idea that it was meant to be a nickname. And maybe it's like a bird witch tradition that like children are called egg until they get to pick their bird name. But Hannah is unaware of this. And so she's like, his name is just egg. <laughs> <laughs> maybe. And like, she's like, you know what? I didn't pick it, but that's what they called him. So he's going to be egg forever. <laughs> I think, I think he likes his name, but personally, like. I have petitioned to have him want to change his name. We can put that in. I, I don't, like, I'm not upset that. Uh, I'm not upset at that idea. But I do think he he likes his name, too. Um, but I like the thought that these young, really early 20-something parents who all have bird names or who, like, adopted bird names in favor of their original names, you know, are like, let's name it the egg. And... <laughs> I think they all would have been like, oh my god, that is so perfect. And Magpie's like, no, and they all do it anyway. <laughs> I think he was probably the first, um, well, I don't know if he was the first bird witch kid, but he was definitely one of the first, like, conceived just among bird witches. Like, in this flock anyway. Yeah. this lighting. I'll fix it later. <laughs> oh no. 
Westy from the East said, latest update, Irma is back up to a Category 5 hurricane, and so is Jose now. Great. Well, that's anxiety-inducing. Laura is correct. People are talking, well, Matt in, in particular is talking about, like, text files of the missing moments. And Laura said, to be honest, we probably do not have most of the plain text for the missing moments. You are correct. <laughs> Laura said, we do have light after, but it's broken up in tiny bitty pieces because she had to redo the page divisions three times. Sorry, Laura. <laughs> she works hard, y'all. She really does. Mm -hmm. So Donna Light asks, so if Egg were to choose a new name, would it be Blue, J, or something else? Probably J. I voted for J. Um, <laughs> not Blue J, though, specifically because, well, you tell it. <laughs> I had the thought, like, well, what if he's Blue J or BJ for short? And then I imagined him telling his mom, like, that he wanted to be called J, and her being like, just J? Why not Blue J? And Dove being like, Mom, BJ, really? <laughs> <laughs> and he just blushes and runs away. <laughs> and Hannah, I'm like, oh. <laughs> oh or he goes, God, God Mom! <laughs> just think about it. <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Oh, don't know. <laughs> oh, she's Japanese. She might actually she say. She might it. actually say. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Hey, <laughs> Does she actually ever speak Japanese? No. I don't know. That she might just be, you know, displaced and not actually know her. Own I mean, she thing. she definitely knows Japanese. Um, it's, it's mentioned canonically that Hana knows quite a few languages, one of which is definitely Japanese. Um. <laughs> but no, I'm, I'm sure she doesn't usually speak in Japanese. Matt says, will we ever see the Fire Islands? Probably not. I can't really think of any reason we would. Um, uh, no. They might at some point be mentioned. Like, I can think of some vague potential missing moments where I could talk about certain things about the Fire Islands, but will the plot ever go there? No. If you want to see the Fire Islands, you should watch Avatar The Last Airbender. Ah. No. No, no. 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 You don't think so? No. No.
Mm -hmm. Oh, it's looking so good. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Ricky said, Palpatine voice. Do it. <laughs> Do it. Do it. <laughs> That's a lot. Uh, for me and Laura doing a joint live write about um, the Fire Islands and specifically Bell Magic. Hmm. I have many thoughts about this. Yes. That do it is so, it's like a household meme here. Mm hmm. What are some other household memes? Hmm. Well, now that you ask me, I can't think of any. Oh. I love you. Make, make way, way. Make way. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that one. Um, what are some other ones? Hmm. Well, there's one in particular I just thought of, but I can't say it out loud because you told me not to. No, do not. <laughs> no. Oh, Lara's right. Food. Food. <laughs> you can't see us, but we're doing the ASLF, uh, the ASLF uh, hand gesture, <laughs> and the drugs vibe. Yeah. Tracks. Yes. Tracks. No, thank you. <laughs> I'm sorry. Who invited? <laughs> Sefi, what a good question. Sefi said, are there other things on that road people walk after they die? Things that might reach back if you reached over? Yes. Yes, there are. Mm-hmm. And as you've seen, I mean, the answer to some of that is just, you know, You've seen them. People get stuck. Or things can get stuck in limbo and can, with the right sort of effort, be pulled Good. out. Is it a mosquito? Yes, it's on your arm. David, look at it. Look right in front of you. Right in front of you. <laughs> Success, David! Yeah. Good. Bravo. Bravo. Destroy. Seppi says, ah, so shards sort of walk that road. Some sorts do. Some. Artsy says, oh, I have a question. Is there an afterlife? Do people reincarnate? I don't know. We've never super ultra... What are you saying, Ash? <laughs> We've never implied such a thing. Ever. No. <laughs> nah, I mean... I don't know. What do you think? That's a good question. That's a good question. <laughs> now, ever since I saw that mosquito, I keep feeling like things are crawling on me. I hate that feeling. One of the headlines on CNN is 20 tasty ways to eat your way through Portugal. And, oh my god, what and the I hell? Just, <laughs> the thoughts that came into my head were not at all safe for work. <laughs> like, I was like, oh my, Portugal sounds like a fun place. Whoa. <laughs> wow. 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 Okay. 
Okay, I meant for this to look like fabric, but it looks like saran wrap, so... <laughs> it kind of does. Let me try this one more time. <laughs> In terms of there being an afterlife in Sister Claire, like, some, yeah, Proxy just said, I think the fact that Catherine heard singing from someone implied to be her mother implies an afterlife. Yeah, like that place where some things or some souls end up stuck, it's a bridge between one place and another. Like, interpret, interpret what's on the other side as you will. Still looks like saran wrap, but I don't care anymore. <laughs> Sefi said, Elena, try using a scratchier brush for light on the linen. But this is drawn in the comic style that doesn't use those brushes. I don't know. This style is aliased. can live with this. Okay. Good night, Jamie. Good night. Oh, I'm sorry, Westy from the East. I did not see your question about your character. Let me... Oh. They said, I want to introduce my Sister Claire character during the part of the timeline where Magpie and the Flock are moving to avoid attracting shards. Would it be feasible for them to land in a bayou even for a short time? 
Yeah. Totes. Totes. Thank you so much for putting the Chapter 9 link on the archive page, Laura. I'm going to go admire it right now. <laughs> there it is. Oh, it's so pretty. Excellent job. Look at that high contrast. <laughs> Whoa. Shing. Oh, shard Clementine picture. <sighs> I saw that. Oh. oh, it's sad. And of course, it's directed at Catherine. I see you, Proxy. I see you. <laughs> it's a it's a very good picture, though. It is good. Um, so Donna Light asks, did Dove in specific get her name because of her form or the other way around? They probably discussed, like, what to name the kid, and probably they were going to, you know, have a bird-themed name. Um, and considering that after the fall, Hannah would have been searching for peace, Dove was a particularly apt name. Looks really good, Deb. Thank you.
Can I have some of your water? Yeah. There's not a lot. You might want to refill it. Yeah. Lara did ask me a very interesting question the other day. She said, Clementine Shard turned human baby act with the twins. Was that the only time she did that? Was it even the first time? To which I replied, that's a good question. This is so cute. Thank you, dear. I love it. I need it. <laughs> Proxy said, I'm definitely going to write fic about Catherine feeling guilty. That's going to be totally in character then. Because mm -hmm. that's, that's entirely, like, what she feels. Roke Reptile says, by the way, what ice cream did you guys get? We went to Cold Stone, and Elena got cookies and cream, right? Mm -hmm. David got confetti cupcake and cookies and cream, and I got sweet cream with chocolate shavings in a milkshake. I couldn't quite finish it. Sorry for all the yawning. I'm just sleepy. I'm almost done, dear. Just adding one last touch. Some blushies. Mm. <laughs> Rogue Reptile said, Could you make a version of this pic with the, bor with the borders of the picture burned out? A lot of people like the thought that it's an old photograph. Oh. Yeah, I can do that. How tired are you, Ash? I mean, I'm tired, but if you want to make an alternate version, like, with that. <laughs> Matt, I didn't know you were afraid of heights, too. I'm very afraid of heights. Like, I'm not really afraid of something taking me to a high place, like if it's an elevator or something that I am not myself powering, but if I have to drive a car up to a high place or if I have to climb a bunch of stairs to a high place, I'm going to be anxious. <laughs> Seppi said, should Pidge have extra blushies because sunburn? Is he, like, constantly sunburned? He might not be here. Okay. Yay! It's done. Hooray! Ooh, hooray.
<laughs> Laura's telling the chat about, <laughs> I'm very afraid of heights, Ash says. And then she was laughing the whole way. I thought the roller coaster was going to kill me. <laughs> that was the funniest thing ever. Laura was so excited when we got on the coaster and then it started to go up the lift hill and she was like, I don't know about this. I don't know about this. And I was like, Laura, look how high we are. <laughs> as I recall, I was bludgeoned very firmly before she then clung to me as we went over the drop. Aw. <laughs> uh. If Lark is signing I love you, I wonder who's taking the picture. Aww. Gabby. She's the one really looking. Gabby or Clementine. Mm-hmm. Mm. It's Jesse's birthday today. <gasps> Happy birthday! Jappy. Uh, J Jappy. <laughs> wow. J <laughs> wow, Ash. <laughs> Rude as hell. <laughs> Jeffy. I was trying to say Jesse. What the hell, brain? Jeffy. <laughs> oh, Muffy. Oh, Muffy. No. <laughs> You're my little cuddly widows. Does anyone have any other questions? Oh, that is a good question. Matt said, if you could start Sister Claire again entirely from the bottom up, what would you do differently in the story? <laughs> Too many things to count. I think... Not make so many characters white. Yeah. Hmm. I don't know about Elena, but I think I would take out the, the like, the pain baby thing. And have more of a focus on horns. Mm -hmm. But, you know, you work with what you got. 
I do think we managed to make it pretty compelling. Um, I mean, I think it was compelling in its own way to begin with, but trying to make it, you know, make sense, <laughs> that was hard. Um, hmm. If I had the story to write like over again, I would have changed a bit about the meeting between Hannah and Oscar a lot earlier, so I could have somehow saved this poly group. I feel really bad that I wrote myself into kind of a corner there, because um, I know this group means a lot to people. And I mean, it's not really a spoiler about Mamu and the Royals, but that's another poly group that doesn't survive. And Elena and Laura and I have talked about this extensively, and it really pains us to, to do this in the story. And at this point, there's not really a way to change it. So what we are thus, you know, wanting to do and also feel like obligated to do is show poly relationships that do endure and sustain uh, or are sustained despite tragedies like this one. <clears throat> but, you know, if I had it, if I had it to write over again, I wouldn't kill every damn body. <laughs> I guess I should say. Just in general, I think, like, I feel like if any readers know us, they know that poly relationships are really important to the people that create Sister Claire, mm -hmm. for kind of obvious reasons. Um, but, like, I want to... Are you okay? Mm -hmm. Did you get your cold teeth? No, I'm just thinking. Oh. Um, but I want to do a better job in the future of showing, you know, poly relationships that do persist. Did I say poly couples? I meant poly relationships. You said poly relationships. Okay, okay. I was doing that thing where I was replaying what I'd said in my head, and I'm like, wait, wait, no. Oh, No, Seffi. Seffi's right. <laughs> Seffi was like... <laughs> Seffi answered for us and was like, oh, maybe I should have waited. No, that's correct. I mean, Elena, you've never made a really big post about it, have you? I, I don't thought that we, we talked about it, like, while Matt was there at the meetup. I don't, he met Sarah. I mean, yeah, but like, I don't, <clears throat> I don't think it was explicit. To mm. someone who's not really expecting it, I don't think it comes off that way. Mm. Well, no, you've actually mentioned it in a chat. Remember when? Matt mentioned that story idea where, like, Sarah was our child, and you were like, that would never work. And he was like, why? And you were like, because Ellen is dating Sarah. Oh, I said, 
You know, but he might have thought I was joking, Elena. Oh. It's really hard to convey tone. Yeah. Just in text. There are also people, this really gets on my nerves, by the way. This is a huge peeve of mine. When and just, two women who are not married are like, oh yeah, she's my wife or like my girlfriend. And I'm like, but she's not actually. You're straight. Stop saying that. Like, yeah. It makes people not believe it when I say my wife. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> Yeah, Matt was like, oh my god, I remember that. I didn't think you actually meant that. I know it's really hard to convey tone just through text. And to someone who doesn't know, it could sound like joking. And at that, at the time of that live write, I don't think Matt had met us in person yet. Mm. I could be wrong, but... Yeah, this version is really sad. Mm. You want it sad? I'll give you sad. (laughs) (coughs) Excuse me. There. Finito. How's that? Rip Very your good. Guts out, sad. Yeah. Sad. I like it. <laughs> Whoa. Are you going to save two versions? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Riggy said this is such a masochistic fandom. Jeez. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. I think it kind of is sometimes. Sometimes I say. No, you want it to be really sad, I could put, like, burn holes in all of their faces except for Egg and Hana. Someone already suggested that, and Matt was like, no, Elena took so much time to draw them. No, don't do that. It's okay, I have another version of it. Saved. Don't. Don't do it. Please. Let Hana look at their faces. Oh, Sefi said, um, do people use Lark sign language openly, or is it like something you got to be careful with because it's associated with Clementine, Eden, and witches and stuff? What if I put a big X over everybody who died? No, 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 no. <sighs> anyway, what I was saying. <laughs> <laughs> now it's like a hit list. <laughs> what I was going to say is that the finger language really got a foothold in Throne of Mare as well. And it does continue to persist also in Salvation, um, in many of the big settlements. Um, and no, it is not, it's not something that's shunned. Remember, like, Lark and Hawk and Pidge really heavily recruited for Eden at the start. Um, they routinely made journeys out, at least until they, you know, got really established as a family. Oh my god, why is this so red? It's a good thought, Seppi, thinking that you, uh, that, that you, that the finger language might be shunned, but it isn't. Many people have forgotten that 
like where it came from exactly. It's it's one of those things that's too useful to kind of just toss aside. You know who else learned the finger language and has probably spread it all around a lot? Abraham. Why is he, why are these colors so like grossly exaggeratedly vivid? <laughs> why do I have to keep setting this to proof colors? Well, I don't know if Abraham would have spread it a lot, but I can see her teaching it to others and maybe even making it part of a curriculum at the Helsing Abbey. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> She likes ways, like, she likes finding out new ways to communicate with people that might not otherwise be able to. <clears throat> On that note... I think my computer is crashing, so I might want to at least stop the recording for now. Okay. If you're watching this on YouTube, thank you so much for being so patient and waiting for me to upload all these videos. <laughs> and uh, if you like what you see here, please feel free to check out the rest of our channel. And read Sister Claire. And tell your friends. Yeah. Spread the gospel. Exactly. Should we sing for the YouTube people? Yeah. Good. Good.